that it is possible to make a difference to this problem, okay. which, by the way, before I got this job, everybody said was impossible. Everybody said it was impossible to get the numbers down at all, but we showed last year that that yeah. was possible. Uh, and now we have a clear plan to in, put a deterrent the, in the, place. The, 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 and that means... And I will, and I will come on to Eldon, okay. but let's, yeah. let, look, crossings have risen by 40% this year against last year to 11,247 people crossing on small boats this year. It's going to be a record year. You have failed to deliver on this pledge. If you, Just please if... acknowledge it. No, no, if you look at the sum total of the time that I've been Prime Minister, because you've, you've picked one particular period, if you look at the sum total of the time that I've been Prime Minister, the numbers are down. The numbers right? were down on la la last year. The numbers in were 2023 down were down on 2022. It's because of the work but that we've we done. Have a rec but that, well, it's a record year this year. They've gone up by 40%. But if you look at in the yes, past six months of this year... these things are is... cyclical, because what you've seen is one new country, okay. Vietnam, accounting for a lot of the new arrivals. All right. And just as let, we let, dealt let, with let. Albania... Let's talk about some important issues facing the United Kingdom right now. Imagine you're trying to solve a really big problem that everyone says is impossible to fix. That's what some leaders in the UK are facing, with the number of people arriving in the country on small boats. Last year, they showed it was possible to reduce these numbers, but now they're going up again. This year, 11,247 people crossed the English Channel in small boats, which is a record number. The government promised to deal with this, but it seems they haven't been able to keep that promise. The main reason for this increase is because of conflicts in other countries like Vietnam. When there's trouble in a country, more people might try to leave and come to places like the UK for safety. The government has tried to handle this by setting deadlines for processing asylum applications, but it's causing problems. For instance, once people are officially recognised as refugees, they're no longer allowed to stay in government-provided accommodation. They have to find their own place to live and try to find a job within just 28 days. Imagine how hard it would be to start over in a new country with so little time. To make matters worse, the UK is facing a cost-of-living crisis. This means everything from food to rent has become much more expensive, the highest it's been in the last 40 years. This is making life difficult not just for refugees but for many people across the country. Some families are even having to dip into their savings just to afford everyday things like groceries. On top of that, there's a shortage of affordable housing which is forcing more people into homelessness. Well, I'm not cooking so much now. Um, trying to turn the lights off. Um, but what else do you cut down on? Um, I mean, thank God for the good weather, then I haven't got to have my dryer on. And you can't get much washing when you've got two babies in the house, and they, I mean, you're washing every other day. You say you're not cooking as much, so what, no. what are you eating? Sandwiches. Does it keep you awake at night? Yeah. Might get an hour's sleep. Just worrying. Yeah. Speaking of homelessness, did you know there are over 39,500 people in the UK who don't have a stable place to live? This includes people who are sleeping on the streets or staying in temporary accommodations like shared flats. It's a tough situation because finding a job and paying rent is even harder when you don't have a home. Many of these people feel abandoned by the government and local councils who are supposed to help in times of need. We know that certainly from the middle of the 20th century onwards, the British state has been increasingly and consistently hostile towards asylum seekers, um, creating more and more legal uh, blockades, legal difficulties uh, in their path. Uh, many British people are uh, taken for a riot by sections of the British media, which is hostile to asylum seekers and peddles a great deal of disinformation about how many are coming in and what will happen when they come in. They have been told that these migrants will be a huge burden on the state. Asylum seekers will take money and resources away from British people, which is also not. The problem is local councils themselves are struggling. They've lost a lot of money from the government over the years, which means they have less to spend on helping people. This has been going on for a while, and it's making it even harder for councils to provide the support that communities desperately need. Now let's talk about why some people are so against 
asylum seekers coming to the UK is partly because of what they hear in the media. Some newspapers and TV shows say things that aren't true about asylum seekers. They make it sound like asylum seekers are a burden on the country's resources, taking away jobs and money from British people. But studies have shown this isn't true. In fact, asylum seekers often bring skills and a willingness to work hard to their new communities. On top of all this, there's the energy crisis. The UK used to get a lot of its gas and fuel from Russia, but because of political tensions, that supply has been cut off. This means not only are goods more expensive, but so are things like heating your home or cooking dinner. It's a difficult situation for everyone, especially those who are already struggling to make ends meet. So what can be done to help solve these problems? Well, it starts with the government and local councils working together to provide more support for people in need. This means not just giving money, but also creating more affordable housing and helping people find stable jobs. It also means being more understanding and welcoming to people who come to the UK seeking safety and a better life. It's important for everyone to understand these issues because they affect all of us, directly or indirectly. By learning more about what's happening and how we can help, we can all work together to make our community stronger and more compassionate. It's not an easy task, but it's one that we can all contribute to in some way. Another big concern is the way asylum seekers are treated once they arrive in the UK. Imagine having to leave your home country because of war or persecution, only to arrive in a new place where you're not always welcomed. Some asylum seekers end up in temporary accommodations provided by the government, but these places are often overcrowded and not very comfortable. Families might have to share small rooms and conditions can be stressful. Let's go back to uh, last night's Nevermind the Ballot Sun event here at Talk Towers uh, when uh, Rishi and Keir Starmer separately uh, came under the grilling of the Sun's political editor, Harry Cole. Uh, now, uh, the, obviously one of the main uh, subjects at hand was the uh, migrant crisis. And uh, the Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, announced that, uh, he said, trust me, the uh, migrants, because apparently all these migrants in Calais, they follow the British political scene very closely. And uh, they're apparently queuing up, waiting for a Labour government. So I'm assuming, uh, Isabel, that the 257 who came across on Sunday and the 882, the record number for this year, who came across last Thursday, I'm assuming that they're just very impatient people who just refuse to wait for the Labour government. Uh, I mean, he's talking out of his backside again, isn't he? They're not waiting for a Labour government. They're just coming over because there's nothing to stop them. Well, they are demonstrably coming over, and we've seen today Nigel Farage out on the channel actually witnessing the way this happens, and he's been exposing this for a very, very long time now. Once asylum seekers are granted refugee status, they're expected to find their own housing within a short time frame. This transition period, known as the move-on period, is supposed to help refugees integrate into society. However, finding affordable housing and stable employment in just 28 days is extremely challenging. Many refugees end up in precarious living situations or even homelessness because they can't meet these demands. Moreover, the process of seeking asylum itself can be lengthy and complicated. Asylum seekers have to navigate a complex legal system, often without much support. Language barriers, lack of legal knowledge and limited access to resources make this process even harder. Imagine being in a new country, trying to understand unfamiliar laws and procedures, all while dealing with the trauma of leaving your home behind. The media also plays a significant role in shaping public perception of asylum seekers. Some newspapers and TV channels portray asylum seekers in a negative light, focusing on sensational stories or spreading misinformation. This can fuel misconceptions and fear among the general public, leading to hostility towards asylum seekers. In reality, many asylum seekers are ordinary people fleeing unimaginable
unimaginable hardships, seeking safety and a chance for a better future. On the economic front, the cost of living crisis has hit vulnerable populations the hardest. With prices rising sharply for essentials like food, fuel and housing, low-income families and refugees are struggling to make ends meet. Many families are forced to make difficult choices, such as whether to buy groceries or pay rent. This financial strain not only affects physical well-being, but also takes a toll on mental health, causing anxiety and stress. Furthermore, homelessness is a growing problem in the UK, exacerbated by a shortage of affordable housing and inadequate support systems. Families with children are particularly vulnerable, often ending up in emergency shelters or temporary accommodations. The lack of stable housing undermines efforts to address other challenges, such as finding employment and accessing education. Local councils responsible for providing support to vulnerable populations are facing their own set of challenges. Years of budget cuts and financial constraints have limited their ability to meet growing demands for housing and social services. As a result, many councils struggle to provide adequate support to asylum seekers and homeless families, further exacerbating social inequalities. The Midlands city of Coventry, population almost 350,000 at the last census. But with net migration passing 600,000, it gives you a sense of just how many people came to the country last year towards double a reasonably sized British city. International students account for more than 200,000 of those arrivals. This group have come from all over the world, from Singapore to India and Morocco to study at the University of Warwick. Why did you want to come to the UK to study? You're experiencing a very, very different lifestyle, you know. Do you think most people who've come to study from abroad will stay in the UK when they finish their courses? Uh, I know most people that I know from my course in third year, final year, have got their uh, grad job or masters in the UK. So I would say yes, most most part, yeah, they will stay. In response to these challenges, community organisations and charities play a crucial role in filling the gaps left by government agencies. These grassroots efforts provide essential services such as food banks, counselling and temporary accommodations to those in need. They rely on donations and volunteers to sustain their operations and make a significant impact on the lives of vulnerable individuals and families. Education and awareness are also key to addressing misconceptions and promoting empathy towards asylum seekers and refugees. By fostering a culture of understanding and inclusivity, communities can create a more welcoming environment for newcomers and support their integration into society. Schools, community centres and religious institutions can play a vital role in promoting tolerance and celebrating diversity. Looking ahead, it's clear that addressing these complex issues requires a comprehensive and compassionate approach. Governments, local councils, community organisations and individuals all have a part to play in creating a more equitable society where everyone has access to basic needs and opportunities for a better life. By working together and advocating for change, we can build a future where asylum seekers and refugees are welcomed with compassion and dignity. So now it's your time to share your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this.